कवि नरसी मेहता यूनिवर्सिटी भक्त कवि नरसी मेहता यूनिवर्सिटी हेलो नमस्कार ऑन द ओकेशन ऑफ वर्ल्ड लायन डे आई वेलकम यू ऑल द ऑडियंस लॉट्स मेनी पीपल आर वाचिंग अस फ्रॉम द फेसबुक एंड विद द हेल्प ऑफ यूट्यूब सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू कॉन्ग्रेचुलेट टू ऑल ऑफ अस बिकॉज द लायन डे दैट इज सेलिब्रेशन वी आर डूइंग दैट इज अ वे ऑफ सिम्बोलाइजेशन and we used to symbolize that we care for our lion and the, our prime objective is for conservation and uh, with the uh, hand to hand with the local people and great efforts by the forest department as well as uh, lots many experts and uh, wildlife enthusiast uh, we could do a uh, very better work in the field of lion conservation lion all of you are very much familiar that not only lion but the lots many animals they are uh, as a part we used to worship because as our hindu uh, mythology we are also very much uh, our god they are having different vahan vehicles so as different uh, animals and lion is one of it and lion conservation is very much important so on the occasion of uh, world uh, lion day uh, i uh, congratulate all of us and we have already successfully completed lots many activities in the conservations and the rally also successfully uh, at the every schools at uh, very taluka uh, district all the places we have done so that is very good activity with it and uh, uh, for the uh, lion we can also get another role that they are one of the important leader so we can also get leadership quality from this right so and uh, all the efforts by the forest department and all the team that is remarkable so we are very happy that uh, department of life sciences bakkavi narsimeta university uh, with uh, all the support from the forest department and we have with us expert bhushan pandya ji uh, we could make uh, this event successful so from the starting uh, now i would like to request dr suhas vyas sir is the head of department Uh, Department of Life Sciences. So I would like to invite Suha sir for the welcome speech, sir. Yes. Uh, namaskar to one and all, uh, respected honourable Vice Chancellor Professor Dr. Chetan Bey Trivedi. Uh, in his absence, sir, he may be joining uh, very shortly. Uh, CCF sir, uh, Dr. Mr. Ramesh uh, from the Junagad Circle. Namaskar to you, sir, as well as Bhushan sir. Uh, who is uh, well known photographer of the wild sciences and uh, namaskar to you sir also uh, we have all gathered and number of audiences which have joined through different uh, sources of the social media uh, it's it's really a great pleasure for us also that two important dignitaries of uh, the field of life of life sciences as a whole and wild science wild wildlife sciences as a particular has been joined and uh, spared their valuable time for uh, this particular occasion because i am very much uh, aware that uh, today is the lion world's lion day but these two dignitaries have spared their time because there will be number of events there will be number of functions which are going on throughout uh, not only online but also the offline uh, sources so in that particular time they have shared their time to us and also our vice chancellor sir uh, that he has been uh, loving and he is more more active in search criterias of of sharing the good will of uh, not only in terms of environmental sciences as well as in the life sciences today we are celebrating this particular day and uh, we are we are going to aware about about the importance of conservation of lion which the forest department and as a whole team of uh, forest has has been given a greater impact uh, i have read, read some of the literatures about the the conservation strategies of not only the lion but also different animals which are being conserved and which are being kept in the reserved areas to protect them to protect the uh, environmental as well as the nature because uh, in 2015 as i read from the literature the data showed that uh, there is an increase of about 29 percentages of the lion 
so which which is a really a remarkable uh, growth of uh, conserving as well as protecting those uh, species valuable species which are linked in the in the food chain as well as in the food web so uh, and we all are aware about the qualities of the lion not only its qualities but it's it's because it's not only a a, a giant animal a giant cat what we say what we say usually say but also it has different characteristic which which our human being can also adapt to it its attitude of course its leadership as jatin bhai rightly said uh, is a very very great saying i have heard from uh, uh, some of the elders that uh, sheep if we have an army of sheep but a lion who is a leader of that army can can get a remarkable outputs in the field on the contrary if we have a, a uh, army of lion but a leader who is a sheep cannot give some of the output so leadership quality of a lion is a great importance and in that particular note i congratulate uh, the forest department and number of other wildlife uh, persons who have given their contribution towards the protecting and saving the uh, the important uh, animal that is lion so i welcome you all as well as towards our the chief guest and to our expert for uh, giving their valuable time in this particular occasion so thank you on behalf of department of life sciences and on thank you on the behalf of uh, bhakti kavi narsi mehta university for uh, sparing your valuable time thank you sir thank you very much thank you very much uh, swa sir <laughs> you rightly said that the you know, the team of ship even if it is like that and i am also with the we uh, department of life sciences is very fortunate enough that we have the leader like you fine <laughs> and who is like lion okay so we are going ahead in this uh, sequence so i would like to uh, introduce uh, dr k ramesh ji uh, and uh, we'll be starting with his uh, presentation uh, just a very brief introduction i would like to give of him presently uh, he is working as a ccf or forest uh, junagadh circle Gujarat Forest Department. He has joined IFS in 2003 and uh, Gujarat Cadre. He is MSc and PhD in entomologist. So uh, the the person of science and as well as the person of uh, uh, who is working at this uh, top level hierarchy. So that is a very good combination. He has completed his PhD in entomology from uh, Indian Agriculture Research Institute, New Delhi. earlier dr ramesh sir has did various administrative postings starting from tapi and dance as scf at sabarkatha gir as dcf principal uh, uh, rangers college uh, rajpipra uh, as uh, cf gandhinagar cf gandhinagar wildlife additional secretary in forest environment department apccf and director of environment and uh, if i keep on uh, speaking there are uh, lots many achievements sir has in the field and sir is very humble and uh, we can approach him any any time and we can discuss subject related topic related things so on this occasion we are very much lucky that we we got uh, his appointment and he he will be delivering his talk to all of you so i would like to request dr ramesh sir to please uh, uh, talk with our audience on the online mode and by the audience if you have some question or that that also if time permits we can uh, include or some of the question that uh, i'll be just taking out and will be asking to the sir right so uh, ramesh sir please uh, share your ppt sir uh, thank you dr jatin ravan well uh, congratulations to everybody on the occasion of uh, world lion day and uh, let me begin with uh, my salutations to professor chetan trivedi the vice chancellor of uh, the university and the head of department of life sciences dr suhas vyas and uh, dr jatin rawal who has been enthusiastically uh, right from the beginning he has been uh, very enthusiastic in uh, you know conducting this program and to my good old friend and a very dedicated wildlife shri bhushan pandya ji and to all the persons present here uh, on uh, different platforms of social media uh, uh, a big welcome so i suppose we must be having uh, some 100 odd people today in the audience 
maybe we can know later exactly what is the uh, number of people here. So I begin uh, my presentation. I'll just uh, uh, share the slides. Well, because I'm new to the software, I uh, just let me understand. We need to press the share button, right? Jitu? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. And then slides. World Lion Day. Yes. You need to just uh, press share button. Is the slide visible on your screen? Uh, let, let me just take the help of my assistant. Jitu, by uh, share it. On my screen, it is uh, showing that it's already shared. Uh, can I, is it available on your screens, please? Uh, not yet, but I think you can remove and you can uh, once again share. <laughs> Jitu bhai. Yes. Uh, yes. Jitu bhai, just uh, press share button. He has already done that. Yes, slide here of our Upload thai kiyo che. Uh, well, we have removed and again uploaded. Am I uh, uh, visible here in, uh, on the screen? Uh, no, uh, sir. Not yet, uh, sir. Uh, share, then uh, slides. Ek kaam karo. Your computer. Cancel karo. Your computer. Majo. Fresh upload karishu. Go to exactly. Sir, uh, you just uh, share your entire screen, then it will be fine. We have uh, again uploaded the same file again. Uh, share again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Share again. Yes, sir. Yes. Now it is showing uploaded. Can I confirm that from you, please? Bekhai Chai? Share screen and try career. Stop screen, slides. Uh, now it's visible, sir. Okay, perfect. perfect. Yes, yes, sir. Full screen, right. So, done. So, uh, welcome everybody. I start my presentation here. Uh, well, we are celebrating the 75th year of our independence. We are celebrating Azadika Amrit Mahatsav. And from August 15th, we'll be entering the Amrit Kal. Honorable Prime Minister of India has uh, given us very uh, ambitious dreams where we should be uh, in 2047 when India would be celebrating 100 years of its existence as an independent country. Now, wildlife conservation, nature conservation is a very important area where we need to work. So, uh, on the occasion of World Lion Day, I would be giving my presentation uh, basically in uh, three parts. First, I would be speaking some background information, which is not necessarily about lion. The second part uh, would be some observations on lion conservation. And the third part, uh, I would, I, as I discussed, would be, you know, uh, because most of our audience would be the young people who are college going, uh, about some career options in conservation. Okay. And in between, if time permits, we'll take certain questions, which has already been uh, passed on by Dr. Jatin Ravel. So let me know at this beginning that how much is the time slot given to me? Uh, Dr. Jatin Rao? Yes, sir. Can I take it half an hour? Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Gee. You can go to next uh, next slide. Perfect. Yes. It's changing. It's changing, sir. Let me start with something. Look, uh, when we talk about lion, Lion is very important, as uh, Dr. Suhas Vyas has said, it, uh, and uh, Dr. Jatin Rawal has said, 
like it has a place of prominence in very names that we keep uh, in our society many people put singh as their title or in their name it has prominence in the religious uh, angle also if you go to a temple the main uh, you know the entrance is known as singh dwar if you see go back to our uh, you know days of uh, uh, rajwada then the king's chair which is the most important chair the power center is known as singhasan right and countries which don't have lion today have given importance to lion our neighboring country which is sri lanka has a lion in its flag singapore which doesn't have any lions has a lion symbol which is very much revered in the country and uh, the greek mythology has uh, stories about androcles and the lion where a friendship between a man and the animal is described in times of crisis so lion has occupied a very important place in our society not only in our society all over the world and for that matter the emblem of india is the ashok stamp and the ashok stamp is nothing but four lions and recently in the newly constructed parliament we have a huge ashok stamp which has been uh, installed so at the power center at the top we have this animal which is lion that in a way indicates the importance of lion in our society in the culture and in different angles so before i start about lion conservation i would like to speak on something regarding you know our biodiversity and uh, and other aspects because uh, you know we need to see uh, lion conservation in a larger picture of nature conservation now there has been a study in 2015 regarding the biodiversity in terms of dna base pairs because if it is an animal or if it's a plant or if it is a human being or whatever microorganism ultimately it all boils down to dna as the genetic material with rare exceptions of rna based viruses so the amount of dna base pairs on earth has been approximated to 5 into 10 to the power of 37 base pairs and uh, approximately it weighs 50 billion tons this is this is a study has happened during that period when the quantum computing or the latest techniques in computing was not that advanced as it is today but this just gives you a kind of a idea of the kind of biodiversity which is there on the planet uh well we have 4 trillion tons of carbon uh the total mass of biosphere okay now the taxa which have been described i'm sure some of you must be taxonomists or experts in that area like 1.9 million uh described taxa are there and uh, we are just guessing that we may be having 11 to 12 million anticipated species in fact we really don't know how many species we have every year we keep on discovering new and new species right so this is the context uh, in uh, in the world in which we are talking now if you see this present slide you see that on the left side maximum biodiversity is in the insecta group that is the invertebrates and uh, if you see the percentage uh, in that terms uh, percentage of yet to be studied you know plants including mosses algae and vascular plants are yet to be studied and chordates mammals birds and fishes are also a uh, lot of species needs to be discovered so this data i have taken from uh, chapman 2009 now why i am telling this is that you know lion is apex species in a ecosystem and we need to see the ecosystem in its entirety so that the species can be conserved along with the other biodiversity uh, this is a picture of the global scale in fact and if you see here at the global scale there are 17 mega diverse countries and uh, if you see there are biodiversity hot spots only on certain places in the earth and we are lucky that our country is one of them so that explains that why we should go into nature conservation in a big way in our country now we come from the global perspective to the national perspective india is habitat for around uh, let's say 9% of all the mammal species let's say around 14% of the bird species 8% of the reptiles 
and 6% uh, of the amphibians, 12.5% uh, of the fish species and 6% of all flowering species that we know as of today. And this data has been taken from ZSI. Uh, within India, we have around 34 biodiversity hotspots, uh, which includes Gujarat. In fact, the Dang part of Gujarat has the Western Ghats and this is one of the biodiversity hotspots. Now, we have a lot of wildlife sanctuaries, biosphere reserves and uh, wetlands and including every year we are you know declaring new and new wetlands under Ramsar Conservation Convention. So we have a good framework of biodiversity conservation in the country. And uh, this particular slide shows the kind of threats we are facing. Well, if you see the planetary boundaries, which is marked in green in this particular slide, and if you see the, uh, the areas which are shown in red, these are threats to our ecosystem. You see that biodiversity loss is the biggest problem we are facing as of today. So we need to do something about biodiversity loss. We need to conserve biodiversity. And if you need to conserve biodiversity, you need to conserve the apex species in the ecosystem. In, in our context, lion is the apex species. Well, a lot of species are getting extinct and there is something called background rate of extinction. You know that Charles Darwin had uh, propounded a theory which is uh, true for all ages to come. It's about survival of the fittest. So in nature, whichever species is able to adapt to the changes, whichever species is able to, uh, uh, able to dominate the ecosystems is going to survive and those species who cannot cope up with the uh, changes in the ecosystems are simply going to go. This is known as background uh, rate of extinction, the species which go. But due to anthropogenic activities, we are having more and more species which are going into extinction. We need to balance development with conservation uh, in a mode of sustainable development. Only then we will be able to conserve species. And this is very much true for the Asiatic lion as well. So I thought that rather than directly talking about the lion conservation, let me give a background of the global scenario and the national scenario in which we are uh, talking of lion conservation. Now, let's come to our country's forest area. Uh, forest area because most of our biodiversity is conserved in the designated forest areas. We do have biodiversity outside the forest areas in the agricultural ecosystems and in the other areas as well. But you know, most of the forest areas are rich sources of biodiversity. Now, the forest and tree cover of our country, uh, as per the latest data available uh, under State of Forest Report, which is published by the Forest Survey of India, is uh, uh, close to 25%. Let us say one fourth of India uh, can come and, uh, as a qualify as a forest and tree cover. But you know, as far as the national forest policy is concerned, as far as the long term goals are concerned of the government of India, we need to cover 33%, that is one third of our country uh, under forest and tree cover. Now, tree cover is uh, defined as uh, tree patches outside forest areas, but they are less than one hectare. But definitely, they are groves of trees. So we need to increase uh, the forest and tree cover, which means that we need to do massive afforestation. By doing afforestation, we build good ecosystems and ecosystems always harbor biodiversity. Now coming to the state in which we are, Gujarat. Where does Gujarat stand in the latest report? The forest area of the state is 14,926 square kilometers. It's uh, very close to around 15,000 square kilometers. And uh, there has been a designated 69 square kilometer uh, increase over the previous assessment of 2019. And this increase has come from uh, increase in the mangrove. Uh, well, there has also been increase in the open forests. Open forests are mostly scrub forests. And uh, there has been a decline in the medium density forest. Now, I also would like to touch upon one topic which is uh, very important as we talk uh, today. Uh, you know, United, I mean, India is a signatory to different international conventions. 
and uh, the decade which has gone by 2011 to 2020 was declared as un decade on biodiversity till now i had spoken on the biodiversity components so united nations had declared the entire decade as the decade of biodiversity now from 2021 to 2030 united nations has declared this decade in which we are presently in as decade of ecosystem restoration because our ecosystems are under tremendous strain and they need to uh, you know repair themselves and repairing themselves would mean that we need to lessen the anthropogenic uh, uh, you know signature that we have on the ecosystems all of you must be aware that uh, when there was a uh, lockdown during the first wave of covid yes there were a lot of uh, other issues regarding the health and uh, regarding the economy and all that but one aspect which has come to notice of everybody is that the rivers had become cleaner the atmosphere the air had become less in pollution and uh, the ecosystem parameters were really good and wildlife was sighted in those areas which normally you don't sight so this was an excellent example for all of us including the scientists community to sit back and see that what is the kind of interference we are doing in the ecosystem and what we need to do for future now in this ecosystem restoration there are different uh, components like uh, you know developing policies uh, we should accelerate reversal of ecosystem degradation then uh, we need to comply with the international commitments and uh, we need to manage financial resources for doing this job we need to up our technology uh, our knowledge our capacity building of the ground level workers who are working in this uh, area and uh, we need to comply with all the sustainable development goals which india has committed in front of the united nations and uh, particularly the small uh, and the marginal farmers and the and the communities which are in the uh, backward i mean in the uh, social ladder mein jo sabse niche hote they need to be on the focus that in the process they are it is the very inclusive kind of a development and we need to you know promote cooperation between uh, the government the civil society the private sector uh, the fund providers and uh, uh, multi partners to achieve this thing and uh, you know ecosystem the restoration decade has also seen a good news for our state like uh, japan international cooperation agency jica has uh, uh, you know collaborated with the uh, gujarat forest department and they are providing uh, a particular scheme they are funding a particular scheme known as perg project for ecosystem restoration in gujarat so that is the background in which i am speaking of this uh, slide and a good component of uh, this ecosystem restoration is uh, involved in restoring of grasslands which are excellent lion habitats and also mitigating the conflict between human beings and wildlife where lion leopard and these carnivores uh, do come into picture with our civil society we also need to uh, keep this in background when we uh, celebrate lions day that honorable prime minister uh in glasgow where there was a climate conference on 2nd of november 2021 had given this uh, uh, you know formula of panchamrit uh, this is the commitment of the country of india towards the world uh, the first commitment was that india will take its non fossil energy uh, capacity uh, to 500 gigawatts by this end of the decade the second was that uh, uh, we'll be going into 50% renewable energy by 2030 the third was that our carbon emissions will be down by 1 billion tons and the fourth was that uh, we'll be reducing the carbon intensity of the economy that is for every rupee of the gdp we'll be reducing the carbon footprint by more than 45% and the fifth was that by year 2070 we'll become completely carbon neutral which is a very big work to do and we need to achieve these uh five goals which has been declared by honorable pm at the same time we need to go for conservation which would mean that we need to rededicate ourselves for lion conservation for other wildlife conservation and for the ecosystem restoration well uh, coming to the origin of lion day i, I come to the second part of the presentation 
well there are uh, two possible origins we are not very uh, sure which one would be correct but i thought i would share both what i know with the audience uh, one was there's a husband wife couple called uh, derek and uh, beverly jobert the wildlife filmmakers conservationists national geographic explorers and residents so in 2013 they had come up with this concept of uh, lion day but there's also another school of thought that uh, in zimbabwe there is one uh, organization known as african lion environment research trust and uh, uh, honorable reverend kokas and david pulden in 2013 proposed that the uh, alert would be celebrating uh, you know national lion day and it had become slowly world lion day and that is what we are celebrating uh, out of this two which one is true i am not very sure but nonetheless celebrating lion day is a very good idea now i am talking of lion in the context of uh, panthera leo persica what we know in our official records okay so historic versus present distribution what you see here in red was the known area of lion and what you see in the blue is the area where it is there even today and there are certain question marks in europe this is where there were certain species of lions as per the fossil records and whatever scientific evidence is there about which i would be talking in one of the slides at the later end of the presentation let us talk of the success story of uh, lion conservation in uh, our gujarat state as you know that uh, the asiatic lion is found in the wild only and only in the state of gujarat and uh, we say that uh, it is the pride of gujarat gujarat no savaj apna garv che so we can uh, compare here the success story of conservation like uh, in 1990 we had 284 lions which were there on official record there might have been more but this is what our record says and the spread of lion was uh, on 6600 square kilometers you can see on the left side of the map that there is gir national park in uh, yellow the gir sanctuary is in uh, green color uh, and you have girnar over there in uh, orangeish color barda is there in yellow and the white specks that you see over there is where lion was reportedly seen this is way back in 1990 now let us fast forward to you know 2020 30 years down the line you know the 284 lions which were counted in the present uh, uh, say last records that we have is 674 lions and from 6600 square kilometers of spread it is now spread over 30000 square kilometers in nine districts and 53 talukas the credit of lion conservation the credit of success story definitely goes to the political establishment for the positive policies which which were uh, you know uh, inculcated and to the forest department officers and staff who had worked day and night for the species conservation and also to the research academia who had given valuable scientific inputs and last but not the least the local people of saurashtra who had played a very big role in conservation through their ethos to their culture and through their attachment with this majestic species so this graph shows the growth story of the lion which i had just told uh, a little while ago and uh, this is what the reasons for success was which uh, i had already enunciated now what do we do for lion conservation is something i'd like to touch on briefly because uh, bhushan bhai is also going to speak on uh, the details of uh, the works which have been done so i am restricting this to just uh, one or two slides like what we do here is that uh, we do habitat management sorry i think certain hyperlink is not working but it's okay i will Uh, continue the same way now the first thing is habitat management wherever lions stay they uh, is known as a particular uh, you know it, it's a habitat the habitat could be a revenue wasteland 
the habitat could be national park the habitat could be sanctuary or sometimes the habitat may even be a mango orchard so here by habitat management what we mean is the forest department manages the habitat which is under its jurisdiction so it could be a grassland like uh, jinjuda vidi or it could be the national park or it could be even the sanctuary what we do in habitat management is let us uh, define it in uh, this way we remove species which are not conducive for the herbivores and we plant species which are good for herbivores for example lantana lantana is something which is a highly invasive species and it uh, destroys the ecosystem diversity so we remove lantana and where we have removed lantana we don't remove it just for one year because the seeds fallen would again regrow so a removal plus two year removal so one plus two is the formula which is normally followed this is followed by plantation of grass and other valuable species on which herbivores would be uh, depending upon you know also pollarding and uh, you know uh, pruning are certain things which are being done by the department when you pollard a tree which would mean that you cut the tree at a particular uh, let's say breast height 1.4 meters then a lot of flushes would come out which would be at the browsing height for the spotted deer as well as for the uh, you know other big herbivores such as uh, sambars and uh, neil guys so when all the species get their food in a proper way then the population of that particular species would flourish what we also do under habitat management is we do fire lines so that the fire doesn't occur in the first place and if it occurs it get restricted to a particular area and doesn't go beyond the level and uh, we also remove cassia tora and other invasive species and uh, we also you know do other habitat management which uh, uh, if details are required we can uh, discuss it separately now we do wildlife monitoring for this we have the system of ground people the trekkers the famous trekkers of sasan and uh, entire greater gir are uh, on a daily basis doing the monitoring of wildlife including the lion and uh, if there are any lion health issues or uh, even if there is nothing that kheriat report definitely comes they are our foot soldiers of conservation and uh, periodically we do this uh, punam avlokan and uh, every 5 years we have a proper census where the numbers are officially declared the number 3 area is human wildlife conflict basically we talk of conflict mitigation now lion is a species which is a large carnivore and a large carnivore definitely goes for a kill because unless it kills a uh, prey uh, it cannot sustain itself so in the process when you have a large carnivore in a particular area uh, and you also share you know two carnivores in the same ecosystem there is lion as well as there is leopard so there is going to be inter species competition also and uh, as an uh, as human population is increasing villages are expanding uh, the gamtal which was of this area is now this area slowly number of houses is increasing the uh, uh, number of people you know going into different areas of the habitats is also increasing at some point of time there is bound to be conflict which is happening so conflict mitigation and uh, conflict control is a very big uh, work which the department does the first thing what we do is i'll give an example to elaborate my point you know that this kodinar belt is very rich in sugarcane every year you know migratory uh, tribal uh, laborers come out from uh, maharashtra and the southern part of gujarat in large numbers and they stay in the sugarcane fields during the harvesting season and that is the time when sugarcane becomes a very undisturbed habitat for leopard and when the cutting happens the leopard habitat also gets disturbed the uh, the agro ecosystem you know gets uh, disturbed from that angle and there is bound to be human animal conflict so our staff regularly goes to those areas they do a monitoring of uh, you know wherever there are uh, labor camps and they inform the labor that uh, you know at night you are not supposed to go out because where carnivores are active and then you know your food habits should be such a way that you don't attract carnivores because if uh, they eat fish or any other non vegetarian food and they leave the remnants 
then the rotten meat would attract carnivores in the first place. And they tell that your children and elderly people should never sleep outside. They should be inside proper uh, enclosures because they are the most vulnerable for uh, you know lifting by leopards. And uh, these are kind of precautionary things which is uh, done on a regular basis. And then, God forbid, if there is a problem which happens, the we have rapid uh, teams which are available all over the lion landscape. Immediately, our person goes to the point and the cage is deployed and the animal which has caused the conflict is normally captured and uh, sent to a rescue center. Uh, well, so in that point, I have uh, covered human wildlife conflict and also rescue rehabilitation. We also do wildlife health monitoring and in case two males fight and uh, there is an injury where there is a maggot uh, growth or that kind of uh, medical intervention is required, we do it immediately. Uh, we do regular patrolling including night patrolling and uh, uh, you know wildlife crime we see to it that it doesn't happen and uh, we also take all precautions uh, to you know with our own intelligence network with joint patrolling with police with pgbcl and everything that uh, you know the safety and security of the lion habitat is intact and uh, in case any crime is detected then we go as per the sops and immediately we try to crack the case the other aspect which is very popular among uh, the public is ecotourism. People know Gir by the name of Sasan. And uh, Sasan is the face of uh, Gir. And Siyo uh, Jovaito Sasan Javadu, that is what normally people, you know, uh, have it in mind. So ecotourism is one aspect where uh, the public in by large, not only from Gujarat, but also from outside the, uh, the state within the country and also uh, uh, from abroad, people come to uh, see the majestic Asiatic lion and uh, at the same time you know they enjoy the beauty of the sanctuary in the process they get uh, nature education they try to appreciate the ecosystem in which they are going and the importance of lion and uh, in the same process a valuable income is ploughed back into the gear ecosystem uh, by means of uh, photography permit entry fees uh, film shooting permission and all these things. Then people's participation. There is no doubt that uh, the local people have contributed immensely to lion conservation. The Maldharis, the settlement villages and uh, the public by and large, uh, you know, around the gear protected area and the larger Asiatic lion landscape have been by and large cooperative in conservation and they have aided the department in, uh, you know, conserving this uh, species. So to keep that intact, and to keep the value of conservation intact, we have a lot of eco-development committees, ecotourism uh, management committees, and uh, we do a lot of participatory work around the sanctuary. We do a lot of awareness programs. Right now, what we're doing is an awareness program only. And the photos you see here of the uh, Siddhi community people leading a group or, uh, you know, uh, this right side photographs are uh, uh, celebrations of Lion Day in the past. So we do a lot of awareness programs. We do nature education camp for, uh, you know, children who are in the high school and uh, early college so that, uh, you know, they properly understand uh, the nature conservation in this uh, right perspective. There's a lot of research and training which uh, is being done. Uh, you know, in the past, we have uh, researchers uh, from abroad uh, coming here as well as uh, from national institutes and from the local uh, universities and uh, these research and training inputs have given a lot of inputs to us uh, to improve our conservation technology and by and large there has been a good community involvement in conservation we also have this gear high-tech monitoring unit where 24 by 7 uh, the radio colored lions are monitored and uh, you know based on the walkie-talkie locations our staff movement is also monitored and if there is any management intervention an alert is generated and in the center, I have put one coming soon, Project Lion. Honorable Prime Minister had uh, declared on 15th of August 2020 uh, that uh, we'll be coming up with uh, Project Lion for conservation of the majestic species. Uh, some work has already been, uh, preparatory work has been done and Project Lion would be coming up in a big way for conservation of this species in Saurashtra. We also do certain uh, works like uh, you know, well parapet so that uh, uh, human as well as animal safety is ensured. 
so these are certain glimpses of the work which uh, the forest department does under land conservation now well uh, can I, can we take up this topics of uh, points for discussion dr jatin raval okay well there were certain questions which we had received like uh, how to achieve sustainable and sensitive eco tourism well it is all about uh, you know making sops uh, of the number of tourists would be coming and sticking to that number one number two the sensitivity of the tourists should be in such that uh, they comply with the requirements of eco tourism like uh, when you go to a sanctuary uh, you are Uh, supposed to behave in a particular way no loud music or uh, you know no bright colors and you know uh, no invasive photography there are certain sops so when you have a restricted number of people entering into the restricted area and they behave sensibly we can definitely achieve sensitive and sustainable eco tourism the second question was uh, the maximum number of lions that gir can support well uh, this is a topic of research because we can't give a figure uh, without any solid data but definitely uh, gear protected area is such that uh, by man intense management operations we can support more lions and uh, we have academic community in front of us so i invite uh, any of you to propose to the department uh, that you can do more research in this area so that we generate data african versus asiatic lions uh it's a topic which about which i would be speaking in a subsequent slide along with the lion species then there was a point that what is gear what is greater gear and what is asiatic lion landscape well i need not speak about what is gear gear is there in the hearts of people here gear is there in the literature it is there in the uh, the importance of saurashtra so gear is gear there it cannot be described in any other way greater gear and asiatic lion landscape are interchangeably used like uh, after the 1987 drought or early 1990s ke baad mein lions started moving out and uh, then uh, the shetranji rivers uh, course served as a major uh, route for the eastern migration there was a northwestern migration towards girnar which became a stable uh, home for lion and then there was sporadic migration to porbandar and other areas including up to parts of jamnagar district uh, so wherever lion sets its foot including the recent one in chotila that becomes greater gear that is as good as saying that it has come under the asiatic lion landscape now wildlife photography as a career we have uh, bhushan bhai here who is a very accomplished wildlife photographer highly respected he would be the best qualified to speak about this and uh, how can msc and phd students help in land conservation uh by doing research by doing genuine research and generating data which is actionable you can definitely help in land conservation and yes uh, after completing your msc or phd like you can have the career option of joining uh, in the forest department and uh, you can work towards the objective how can lions adapt to new habitats and how habitat improvement is done well adapting to new habitats the species is uh, has definitely adapted to new habitats the lion has gone now to the coastal areas and it has adapted to the coastal atmosphere the lion in the national park behaves a bit differently the lion uh, which is in bhavnagar or in the uh, lilia krakach belt where there is a lot of heat there is a lot of uh, you know salinity in the water has adapted by itself so it is the species hardiness which makes it adapt to the new habitats and as far as the habitat improvement is concerned i have already described to you how do we do the habitat improvement in one of my previous slides uh this is one point which i wanted to speak in the previous slide there was this uh, question of you know lion species and asiatic versus african lion well if you see this uh, right side of the slide you see that uh, this is the evolutionary tree the phylogenetic tree where different panthera species and neophilis species has been depicted 
there were lions not much beyond the existing lions what we see here is basically you know panthera leo leo this is what the african lion is said to be and uh, panthera leo persica is what uh, iocn had uh, declared in 2008 okay so recently there was another uh, you know controversy that nay ye sab the only one species panthera leo leo exists in africa as well as in india now the taxonomists are arguing and they are you know trying to uh, come out to a conclusion between each other but as far as the government of india or uh, government of gujarat is concerned we consider the asiatic lion as panthera leo persica whatever is the uh, iucn uh, guideline of 2008 and panthera leo leo as the african lion this is our official stand let the taxonomists uh, uh, sort it over internationally and then uh, let the government take a call on it till then this is how the thing is now coming to the other species there was a steppy lion called panthera spileya this species was found in siberia the present day russia and uh, up to the korea japanese border and uh, it was found all the way in europe up to spain you see the kind of uh, diverse habitat right from the snow habitat till the coastal uh, area mediterranean habitat uh, it is now extinct well uh, there is a sympatric species to panthera spelia which is the american cave lion around the same species around the same time in uh, america there was this panthera atrox and uh, it is also now extinct now we also have a fossil cat uh, which evolved uh, around 6 lakh years ago which is known as panthera leo fossilis the very subspecies name is fossilis uh, it was found uh, you know coexisting with the other panthera species that is the first species which are described panthera spleaia so some remnants have been found uh, in germany in uk and in parts of siberia so uh, this is one species which existed and all of you must have noticed that sri lankan flag has lion on it well there is a basis for it like uh, only two tooth uh, remnants had been found near colombo in a place called kuruvita of a lion species which became extinct some 37000 years ago and uh, that species has been named as sri lankan lion panthera leo leo sinhalius so this is uh, some very interesting information and then we also have a south african lion even today the lion which is there in africa which we known as panthera leo leo there are taxonomists who do classify the african lion into two different categories so the particularly the species of lion which is found in the southern part of africa and uh, up to you know the kenya part is uh, known as southern african lion panthera leo melanochaeta again there is a debate between taxonomists whether this is panthera leo leo or panthera leo melanochaeta some say it is the same some say that these are two different subspecies but uh, i i thought i leave it to you for uh, you know your opinion on this subject but this is what the scientific community says regarding the species of lions and what i just described was like this this was the american lion which went extinct and you see alaska and here this is the kamchatka peninsula of russia once upon a time these two land masses were one slowly slowly they drifted apart so this panthera spileya was found from here the spain portuguese coast till alaska and the present day western canada and now the species is completely only a fossil and then panthera leo again this is debatable regarding the species but international scientific community says that this green zone is of panthera leo and uh, this part of america had that panthera atrax and uh, i just mentioned about panthera leo leo and neo melanochaeta so these uh, uh, this map shows the distribution of the species and different clades you know there is a somaliensis clade there is kampji clade clade there is senegalensis clade now again this is uh, being debated hotly by the taxonomists uh, on an international forum 
but as far as conservation is concerned all the species whether they are same or named differently have to be conserved i come to the third part of my presentation that is to make a career in conservation well uh there was a time when i was a student studying in agriculture university and i did my masters as uh, dr jatin rawal has introduced i did my masters from delhi in indian agriculture research institute i did my phd also from the same institute the same institute which had given green revolution to the country and uh, you know when i was studying i used to attend lectures on conservation i used to go to world wide fund for nature uh, i used to watch nature and conservation related movies i used to go to india habitat center and you know watch certain uh, you know experts uh, domain experts speaking on conservation and some of that really motivated me that i can make a career in conservation and when you think that you can then definitely you can so this was my own example that's how i am here today in the service uh, to those youngsters who want to be a forest officer there are different options one option is that you can become a range forest officer for that the minimum uh, required is a graduation in science and uh, range forest officer is a khaki uh, service with three stars on it then uh, comes the gujarat forest service class 1 where uh, one joins as a assistant conservator of forest the recruitment is done by gpsc and then the topmost level of entry into the forest department is uh, the indian forest service which is an all india service at par with the indian administrative service and the indian police service so these are the three options for entering the forest department in the officer cadre there are also a lot of career options in research you have wildlife institute of india you have uh, genomics related institutes you have uh, you know ccmb has its own center known as lacons there are a lot of research happening in india as well as abroad on wildlife conservation and uh, you know if you are interested academically that also is a very good area where you can uh, contribute to conservation another area of conservation is uh, definitely wildlife photography bhushan bhai may speak about it and then wildlife journalism like there are journals like national geographic discovery and uh, many other magazines uh, like uh, sanctuary asia and uh, you know savers there are many magazines where you know uh, if you are good at journalism if you are good at reporting you can become a wildlife reporter also so uh, there are different areas uh, uh, where you can make your career in conservation there is also basic research which uh, ultimately converts into applied research in some area where you can uh, become a, con a conservationist and of course there is this teaching line where you would be you know um, grooming the next generation to become researchers so these are different areas where you can make a con uh, career in conservation and uh, all of us should support this noble cause so that it ensures our own survival as a species so with this i end my part of the lecture and thank you so much uh, to Uh, Narsi Mehta University for giving me an opportunity to speak on this occasion. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Ramesh sir. <laughs> you include uh, lots many points. Uh, if if I just uh, try to sum up some of the points that you very nicely you talk about the new Ramsar sites, you talk about threats for the conservation of uh, biodiversity. That very important point you mentioned that. to conserve any of the biodiversity you need to conserve the apex species that is very important point students listening to me please make note of it that is uh, this top or the apex species is very much important for the conservation of uh, any of the particular habitat which we are talking on uh, he is talk about the different forest areas and how to conserve there uh, and he said that about <laughs> uh, uh, one third of the tree cover and that is a uh, real a dream that we can if we can achieve then that is very much important that uh, we can uh, cover uh, one third of our with the uh, forest he talk about the ecosystem that harbor the biodiversity is conservation strategies he has talk about and uh, he mentioned that habitat management is very much important you need to manage the habitats in which uh, you want the species to uh, conserve so for that he talk about the national parks sanctuaries and other grasslands 
and here the other areas that which are out of control of the forest department so other than the revenue areas other areas also the where the other people that they are the, the private but they their support is also crucial to save the, this giant species you talk about the intra uh, species that means the, the uh, interactions and the conflict in between the lion and other species especially leopard uh, sops there uh, another aspects and it is very nice that he has also included many of the questions that uh, we asked some of the students that what are your questions on the line day so some of them has already uh, given us the questions in the text that we have forwarded to both the experts and uh, it is thank you very much ramesh sir that you have thrown light on such questions and you answer, answer many such questions as well uh, further questions that will be emailing you so that as that at, at per your ease you can uh, answer those questions uh, fine so thank you very much uh, despite of your busy schedule to spare time and you could agree to talk with the students uh, regarding uh, lion day conservation forest activities and the departmental activities the bhagkavi narsimha mehta university and department of life sciences is very much thankful to you sir for providing uh, this expert talk thank you sir uh, now uh, moving forward uh, uh i will just look into the uh, text if some important questions are there then I, i can ask then we'll go to the next session some of the question in the online chat or more uh, most of them are there ha ah, yes uh, sir uh, one of the question uh, ramesh sir uh, one of the question was that that how the census is being carried out means basically that idea students are having but one of the question was that and when we are doing lion census so uh, you would you like to throw some light on this how we census how we, how we do that process well <laughs> census used to be done long ago by bait method i think bhushan okay. bhai must have been witness to those days <laughs> and uh, later the method was changed because there was a petition in the honorable court and the okay. census method was changed to actual count okay and okay. Uh, whatever event today what we do is the actual count method okay yeah fine uh, so some of the other question that you already included and as we have discussed some of the question bhushan sir uh, is going to incorporate <laughs> okay thank you sir uh, now i would like to introduce our another expert in the arena so he is uh, bhushan pandya ji so bhushan pandya ji is very uh, renowned uh, photographer wildlife photographer i should say and uh, a wildlife enthusiast also he has uh, spared uh, most of his time in the, with the wildlife if i just uh, try to brief up it's some of the achievements uh, for the conservation through camera that is his tagline that conservation through camera and from the school days he was very much interested in to jungle and to nature trips and one of the important uh, aspect i just feel once i was just going through his biodata that uh, in the his uh, early or young age he used to meet uh, various scientists so here uh, dr abdul kalam ji has also said that in, in his book as well ignited minds so at this stage i thought that that could be one of the point that trigger him to uh, wildlife and to study them more closely so he he mentioned that in the from the different in your universities wildlife institute of india that other university of nation even abroad he happened to meet with the lots many experts in the field of wildlife and that that may be one of the aspect that uh, he is very much interested into the wildlife he has uh, lots many uh, published books and his articles his photograph land of the tiger in the bbc book the deer lion by h s singh so in the lots many pugmark there are lots many and he has talked about the geet also uh, photographs published in the magazine bbc wildlife bbc earth century asia century club on bill by bnhs zoo sprint so lots many magazine he has uh, published his photographs uh, photographs published in the various uh, print medias so uh, dna times of india indian express other local newspapers also photograph used in the interpretation center so that is also very much important activity that lots many photographs that he has used in the this interpretation centers even the uh, zoological society of london and the many other places 
Vedavadar, Kanha, Nal Sarovar, lots many. He has uh, uh, lots many awards, won first prize in the All India, uh, this mother and child photography, then honored, honored by the Century Asia, uh, BBC Earth Photographer of the Month in 2016, honored for the uh, Gujarat Forest Department uh, by two thousand in 2015 and 16. Uh, with the he is also uh, conferred with the Rajko, Rajkot Gaurav Award by the North Gujarat University as uh, an honor by the uh, lots many clubs as well. He has lots many exhibitions at the various places like uh, Junagadh, uh, other places, Jamnagar, Rajkot, Bhavnagar, Gondal, many places. His wildlife uh, has another uh, achievements also the Great Cats of India by the U UK. Fine. Work as a scientific advisor with the team of uh, Icon Films, uh, Bristol, UK, and uh, the Last Line of India. So he has also had contribution in the Last Line of India. You might be very uh, familiar and the other BBC series is. And there are a lot of many achievements that he has uh, uh, in, in this field. And uh, we thought that we chosen the right person to talk on and the uh, wildlife this La world lion day lots many documentation done by him official documentation for Green wildlife century and the other documentation power of nature biodiversity conservation and the gpec documentation for rare and endangered wildlife about the uh, lots many 30 uh, 30 protected areas of india africa and nepal so itself it is a great achievement that person the, who is going to talk with you has already have 30 uh, or the protected areas, not about the other areas. It, it could be other areas of the jungle as well, but the protected areas in India, Africa, and Nepal. And lots many he has given his input in lots many documentation census as well, because photography is a proof. So without taking much of the time, and uh, I would like to uh, give uh, a mic to the Bhushan Pandya ji, who is an uh, expert and uh, is also contributed very well for the lion conservation as well. Uh, Bhushan Pandya ji, uh, please uh, share your screen and the uh, audience is yours. Thank you, Dr. Jatin Bhai. Good evening, uh, Dr. Chetan Bhai, uh, Vice Chancellor, uh, Dr. Vyas, and uh, Dr. Ramesh sir. Good evening, friends who join, join here and uh, all the students of uh, Narsi Mehta, Bhakta Kavi Narsi Mehta University. Dr. Ramesh sir has uh, elaborated and explained many important aspects of lion conservation and conflict management. Uh, it is very important. Today is World Lion Day and Ramesh sir has already explained about it, so I will not repeat it. The majestic lion is not just an animal for us. It's a symbol of bravery, strength, power and royalty. And it is in uh, this uh, national emblem, state emblem, and make in India emblem also. Lion's appearance and behavior make him the real king of the forest. The facial tissues of male lion very much are they are very much similar to human facial tissues, and the main. And the uh, and his eyes eyes resemble a saint. Very graceful uh, appearance. Very different for from other animals. Uh, I think uh, we have uh, crossed our uh, time limit. So I would like to ask Jatin by how much time we have. I don't want to curtail my presentation and uh, two small videos. Yes. I, can... I will start with the PPT, sir. Okay. We'll start with PowerPoint presentation. 
one uh, question uh, uh, I'll answer that uh, Ramesh sir has had already uh, left to me. It is about, yes. about making a career in wildlife photography. These days, many uh, youngsters and their parents approach me. Asked to ask about it, but uh, in short, I will explain that uh, there is no market of wildlife photographs. If you have a career, you can do wildlife photography because it is very expensive, very time consuming, and uh, there is no regular market. But if you wish to serve, as I, I have been doing, to the environment, to the conservation, you can spread wide messages through good photographs. How to conserve them, how they are important to us. Uh, I will uh, give one example. Uh, people ask me about which is your best photographs. I will say that uh, it may be, may, I have not uh, yet taken it. There are some photographs. Uh, very memorable but one photograph it gives me immense uh, satisfaction is not of wildlife there was an illegal mining going on near Jamala just outside the century and since it was, it was in revenue area the department could not do much about it my photographs exposed it and the mining was stopped uh, the article was published in the times of india front page of the times of india illegal mining silences the roar of lion and the next day it was stopped so it the such photographs give you immense pleasure and satisfaction uh, can we go to presentations uh, please uh, share the screen from there sir Please uh, yeah. share the share button and your entire screen then we'll be able to see. I have shared it. Can you see the slide? Share share option you need to click. I have already shared. I'll do it again. Yes, sir. Share entire screen, then it will be visible. Yes, sir. Now we can see. Yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, it is visible. Okay. Fine. I'll show the slides and uh, whenever I have to say something, I'll brief about it. This is the Vasa doll hill when we go from uh, Junagadh side to Sasan this is a landmark this view is of Kamleshwar dam taken from Amla hill this image was, image was taken during the rain in the forest. Usually forest is closed for the uh, visitors, but since I was doing documentation, uh, I could take uh, some pictures. This is Jamjir waterfall at Jamwala. It is on Shingoda river. Yeah. This is a memorable work for me. 
it was done in 1996-97 when there was no digital photography. It is a view of 360 degree view of Gir forest from three different seasons. I had to take nine photographs to stitch to make one view. Accordingly, this image is created by stitching 27 images and it took one year to record the three seasons. As Dr. Ramesh sir mentioned, we have rich uh, diversity of insects. <coughs> Excuse me. It is it is told that uh, there are two thousand species of insects. <coughs> but but as far as I know, there is a uh, room for research. Many people without much knowledge keep uh, shard dotted at their home, but it is an offense. One should not, one cannot keep it without permission. Monitor lizard. Once Mars, uh, Mars crocodile was uh, in endangered list, but now we have uh, very good population of crocodiles. I think you can see the image in the eye of this red, a red snake. Gir has a very rich population of uh, birds. Once Dr. Salim Ali had said that if Gir was uh, not a lion century, it would have been an excellent bird century. Pitta comes here. In Girnar also we have Pitta. Uh, in monsoon, before monsoon, it makes nest and returns with chicks. It was a rainy day and uh, the parent, maybe the mother, was uh, protecting her chicks under the wings. <coughs> this image was taken at Velavadar, but Floricans are recorded in gear, so I have included some of the images. Changeable hawk eagle and uh, uh, 
uh, crested serpent eagle are uh, very common uh, raptors uh, commonly seen at gear we have lost 99.99 vultures the population has fallen fallen like a free falling stone vulture is a long ranging bird and mostly found in revenue areas so various factors make it very difficult to conserve the species <clears throat> the lion's diet in the past was uh, 25% wild ungulates and 75% livestock however recent uh, research data shows that it is reversed now 75% diet is from wild ungulates i'll show some of the ungulates <clears throat> This is very important image. Rusty spotted cat. It is in Ginnar also. It is the smallest cat in the cat family, and we have the largest cat also. So, it shows the richness of gear, biodiversity of gear. the research by dr samshad alam revealed that uh, the density of high nine gear is more than what is at africa leopard is a very useful co-predator uh, somebody say that it is a competitor to lion but i feel that uh, leopard is a secondary predator always avoids uh, fight with lion jokingly i say that leopard is cook for lion often leopard catches uh, some uh, more agile prey like uh, chital and lion snatches it from a leopard leopard is very efficient arboreal animal arguably the most beautiful cat this is the real cat walk <laughs> Uh, 
I think you can see the Chital standing behind behind the leopard. Dr. Ramesh sir has already described about tourism. And we have very organized tourism at Sasan. All the drivers and guides are regularly trained. Look at the eyes and mane and facial muscles, expressions of this male, as I was mentioning. I've experienced that when a lion walks, all the jungle awakes. Lion is usually very calm and do not uh, does not attack us. But when the lions are in mating, we have to be very careful. We have to respect their uh, privacy. Mother with young cubs is very much protective. Look at her. She is sitting like a wall, protect, protective wall. These two lions were named Ram or Shyam. Lion, all the carnivores drink water by their tongue. All the herbivores drink water with mouth like us. This image was displayed during my maiden uh, exhibition at Rajkot in 1999. Uh, Shri Basu Saheb, Chief Secretary, had come as a chief guest. And uh, he read this title. The title was given by my friend and uh, retired foreign officer, Shri Uday Bhai Vora. Basu Saheb, Pass uh, a few minutes looking at the image and then uh, told me that uh, it is right. If the lions were protect, protecting themselves, they would have protected them uh, better than us.
from recent data, we know that uh, all the grass weeds are very important habitat for lions of Turkey. This image was taken at Babra Vidi. This is also near Babra Vidi. However, in Greater Gir, we need to preserve all the corridors. And for that, eco-sensitive zone is very important. This is also an image from uh, Greater Gir. I'll show some images of coastal area, coastal lions. This was it was the first ever documentation done in December 1996. And I dedicate the images to all the tracker team, wildlife division, Sasangir, Wildlife Circle, Chunagat, and Gujarat Forest Department. Without their help. I, I would have I could have never recorded them. They use the habitat of Prosopis julifora. It is seen in the background uh, most of the time. And in the evening they come out. This is very famous image. Lions usually do not go near water. So it was just my lion luck that I could capture this image. These lions we had filmed in 2005 in a documentary, The Last Lions of India by Icon Team, Icon Films. These are some awards and certificates. BBC Earth Photographer of the Month. Spotlight Award by Century Asia. I had prepared a book, a report on conserv conservation of vultures and given to the chairperson uh, CM3 Vijay Bhai Rupani. He had acknowledged it with this letter. This is a rare image of lioness with her own five cubs of born in same litter. Asiatic lioness usually give birth gives birth to two or three cubs. There was a pride of 15, four lionesses and 11 cubs. I tried about four, four and a half months to capture the whole pride, but uh, I could not capture the 15. Once I uh, took this, I could to take this image of 12 and once the 13. Usually what happened that cubs uh, come, come to this water hole early and then uh, last the adult come. I usually do not uh, send it to competition. I had sent this uh, before say about uh, 27, 28 years. It's a red snake in the nest of this paraket. This is a rare image. A crocodile, juvenile crocodile was killed by a lioness. And at that time, I was told that uh, not, not any such documentation uh, recorded in Africa also. When I took this image, my friend 
<clears throat> Mr. Rohit Vyas was also with me. He has also taken some beautiful images. This image is acclaimed as one of the most expressive wildlife images. If you see at the expression of the lioness, you will see that uh, it she is smiling. How carelessly the cub is sleeping on her. I'll tell you a small incident. Life is beyond the awards when passion becomes identity. In the year 2000, we had gone to Kaziranga. On our way to Kaziranga, we had gone to Shillong. Gohati and uh, one of our friends friend invited us for dinner he was a big businessman involved in transport business and uh, we never met each other so our friend introduced ourselves uh, all of us when he said that i am bushan pandya that gentleman's wife stood up and said, Oh, Bhushan Pandya, the lion man from Gujarat, <laughs> from the other side of country. Uh, it was the most satisfying certificate for me. I dedicate all these images to all the lion lovers. This slide show is uh, over. I would like to show two video clips. Uh, yes, sir. Just a minute. Is that video?
my presentation and uh, videos are so i would like to uh, okay. i would like to add a uh, uh, sentence to the students of uh, that you have the name of Sneha in your university. Lord Vishnu has yes. taken incarnation of Narsimha to kill the evil king ah. of Hiranya Kashi. So you all are very lucky. And you are the future of conservation. You all can make, make difference. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you, Mushanji. Uh, Thank you, Ramesh, sir. A uh, few questions that is there we can inform it. Normally, kingdom of lion that lasts for two or three years, one, one the dominant male take the pride, then it may last for two, three years, or uh, what is your saying on that? Anybody, sir? Uh, it, it depends on many things. If uh, okay. the male or there, there is a collision of two or three males, in the adjoining territory, okay. a weaker male has to leave. And uh, if uh, mostly we, I have seen that the two males make coalition and they dominate their uh, territory uh, okay. for five, six, or seven years and make several, okay. uh, several small prides. Right. And uh, how, how they uh, withstand the seasonal variations? Because in May and that, there is extreme heat. Uh, vegetation is also scarce. And uh, in the monsoon, the scenario is all totally changed. So how they themselves I had, get adapted I had to visited, that situation? I had visited a safari park, Woburn, near London. Okay. Uh, I, I was there in October. Uh, there was no snow. But in the brochure, I had seen an image of 10 or 15 lions sitting on snow. Okay. So, lion, tigers, leopards can adjust to all the climates, provided they are given safety and food. Safety from uh, whom? Safety uh, from uh, us. Uh, we are the most dangerous species on earth. <laughs> uh, very nice, very nice. So, uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, Bhushan sir, you have included lots many aspects. So uh, I would like to just uh, conclude our webinar. I am very much thankful to CCF Junagad Ramesh sir and uh, expert Bhushan Pandyaji for sparing your valuable time and be part of this lion celebration. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll just uh, will uh, come to the end of very fruitful discussion. Both of you have given your lots many inputs because you have uh, many years experience. Uh, sir will also be having, uh, Ramesh sir will be almost completing 20 years in this administration and uh, doing all these duties. And you also have great experience. I'm very much thankful that you have given your valuable time. And uh, for the student's sake, you agreed to be part of this webinar. Okay. Thank you all. Anushka. It was a great Anushka. pleasure. Thank you so much. Namaskar. Thank you, Bhushan. Photos and videos were so good. Huh? Refresh the memories. Oh.